So Lynn is a therapy manager and senior, senior physiotherapist, and she came over to Australia in 2008 um, and was originally in the north of England and London, a bit like me. See if you can tell if there's the same sort of accent there. Uh, Lynn's special interest lies in the field of adult neuro re rehabilitation, and she's taken on expanding professional development division and management of the growing therapy team at um, Advanced Rehab Center. So um, welcome, Lynn. Thank you, Julian. Um, thank you for inviting me to speak today. So as you're aware, I'm not actually Melissa. So um, yeah, my name is Lynn Tullock. So I'm a senior neurological physiotherapist having worked in the last eight years solely in um, neurology. So I, I see on a day-to-day -day basis a broad range of clients with stroke, spinal cord injury, um, and brain tumor, which is what we're here to hear about today. Um, I work in a private outpatient clinic in St. Leonard's and we do have a mobile service as well and my background experience is 11 years of working in the NHS in the UK and coming over to Australia I've worked in private practice. Um, so an outline of what we're going to talk about today is what is rehabilitation, why is it important, how can it help? And importantly, how can you access rehabilitation? And I know just from talking at lunchtime today, um, that's something that people specifically want to hear, as it could be a big limitation in, in Sydney. All right, so um, brain tumors and spinal cord tumors, as we know, are space occupying and can lead to direct injury of the brain. So it can affect your movement, speech, sensation, movement coordination, cognition. Um, neurosurgery can also lead to further injury and chemotherapy and radiotherapy can also have an impact on somebody's function and ability to function. Um, rehab is the same from my point of view, someone with a brain tumor or another neurological brain condition such as a stroke. However, when we set goals with our clients, obviously the pathology um, is important in order to set, set goals. So why is rehabilitation important? And in this um, client group is extremely important and extremely useful in all stages of disease. So rehabilitation can enhance the recovery of the brain. So we've all, I think, heard of neuroplastic change. So we know that external factors can actually aid neuroplastic changes in the brain and lead to improvements in movement with rehabilitation. Um, we see lots of our clients who are on medication for improving the swelling around the tumor of their brain and then rehabilitation works alongside that medication um, and also post neurological surgery as well. Um, Rehab is also important to improve quality of life and independence, so both around being able to um, get in and out of bed, walk, um, transfer, drive a car, prepare meals, um, ability to dress yourself. Um, it's also important to improve secondary complications and also deconditioning, so through intensity appropriate exercise, making sure we're keeping our clients as fit and active as possible. It plays a role in pain management, so modalities such as, such as hydrotherapy, supportive devices, um, movement, massage therapy can also be useful in, in pain management. Um, and also injury prevention and patient um, safety. So that includes giving caregivers training on how to assist somebody to move or transfer to look after their health and also the client's health as well. Um, also, when somebody goes home from hospital, we find that sometimes there's a little bit of a gap with community services. So we see lots of clients on discharge to continue that support on returning home. Okay, so the range of op, um, oxygen uptake to be able to do most basic activities of daily living, such as dress yourself, get in and out of bed, incidental walking around the home is significantly higher in people who are physically compromised. So we know that day-to-day -day activities are particularly difficult and more effortful for people with a neurological disability. So when the level of fitness is low, regardless of the reason, physical activities may either become limited by tiredness or fatigue and impossible to perform or need to be performed with assistance. 
So levels of fitness below a certain threshold need to be, um, needed to perform activities of daily living mean loss of independence. So basically with our, our clients, so we, we don't just do functional retraining in order to achieve their goals, but we also set them up with an intensity um, appropriate exercise program really to optimize their fitness. So types of rehabilitation. So most people will know about inpatient rehabilitation. So um, our clients could be m admitted into a hospital or a rehabilitation ward in order to undergo a duration of intensive rehabilitation as an imp inpatient. That can be following surgery or just a burst of therapy to try and achieve a specific goal. Um, there's also outpatient services, so um, clients may have access to a day hospital or outpatient therapy in a hospital or in our clinic, so we're a private neurological outpatient clinic. Rehabilitation can also happen in the community, so seeing patients at home in their own environment can be extremely valuable. Um, and that can also include teaching carers, family members, um, educating people. We see lots of clients in gyms, so we're quite flexible with our approach. Um, and a lot of patients, I really feel, benefit from home-based rehabilitation. Okay, so your rehabilitation team really depends on the impairments and limitations that you have. Um, and what are your specific goals? which can be defined by your tumor location or the effects of surgery, um, and that will define who is in your re rehab team. So I'm just gonna talk about the typical allied health uh, professionals which may be included in your rehab team. That always gets a bit of talking. <laughs> so he was really skinny when we started work with him, the guy in the bottom right. <laughs> Um, so firstly, um, physiotherapy. So I think most people in the room know what physiotherapy is all about. So we, we work on um, our clients' mobility through gait training. We work on um, functional retraining, improve, improving people's transfers, back to running. Um, we work on general strength, fitness, teaching carers, seeing people in gyms, and educating people about physical capabilities. Occupational therapists, so occupational therapists also um, work on physical impairments as well, and particularly the upper limb. Um, they, they can, they can um, look at some home modifications, things like rails, um, adaptations to bathrooms, kitchens, to make activities of daily living easier for that client if they need it to be, so that can, they can maintain independence. They can prescribe and order equipment from wheelchairs, um, seating, um, bed rails, hospital beds, and they can also look and assess at cognition and planning. Um, OTs are also involved with returning to work and, um, and driving assessments as well. Speech and language therapists, or speech pathologists, as I think we call them over here, um, looking at res both receptive and expressive difficulties, which some, some of our clients may have, um, which look at difficulty saying words and difficulty um, interpreting words. Um, they also look at swallowing and eating. Okay, so clinical psychologists, um, may be involved in counseling, adjustment, and coping strategies. They can also do cognitive assessments um, and put behavioral management plans into place if that's indicated. So orthotics is a field which most, a lot of people may not be that familiar with, um, but a neuromuscular orthotist looks at making um, both off-the-shelf and custom-made devices um, to, to aid with people's mobility. So these are devices which are designed to improve the efficiency of somebody's walking, therefore reducing the effortfulness of somebody's walking, um, and it may also have an impact on falls prevention as well. Okay, um, our nurses, so there's lots of specialist nurses as well, um, look at medication, hygiene, um, wound pressure care. 
and the social worker, which can look into things like respite, support services, care needs, and funding advice. Dietitians, um, which give specialist advice about nutrition and calorie intake, so weight gain, weight loss, and, and, and calorific supplements. Okay, so I think we probably will dwell on this slide a little bit longer. So looking at um, funding options for rehabilitation, and this is something that I feel you have to really dig for in, in this world. And, and being here for five years in Australia, I've really learned what's out there through um, patients telling me, getting on the phone, and, 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 and seeing what, what they can get. So um, there are some grants available for rehabilitation. So for an example, recently in the, next, in the last six months, there have been some um, brain injury New South Wales therapy grants, and they've awarded um, specific amounts of money related to a therapy need. So at the center, we've had about five successful applicants who've had their therapy funded, um, and they've had a piece of equipment funded, or they've had a course of therapy funded to reach a specific goal. There's also case management and, and brokerage. So again, this is uh, the, the sort of role of the social worker as an inpatient as well. So we've had clients who've had attendant care packages funded and some of that money's been put towards therapy as well. Um, the EPC scheme gives a small rebate for therapy. So I think at the moment you get about $53 for five sessions a year only um, back for outpatient physiotherapy. So it's minimal, but, it, but it's a start and it exists. Um, we have lots of clients who do their own fundraising to, to pay for their therapy. And also I've written on here a job access scheme, which is something I've become f more familiar with over the sort of last six, to, six months to a year, um, which is a government funded scheme whereby they could potentially fund pieces of equipment or even therapy to aid somebody to stay at work and to support somebody to stay at work. Um, and a, a, we a good website to visit is, is if you Google job access, it will come up there and it is government funded. And I suggest you pick up the phone. They're a very useful organization. They do have a hotline and they'll be able to talk through some options, some, some options for you. Okay, so that was short but sweet, but thank you very much. Um, do we have, are we doing questions now, Gillian, or just moving? Yeah, if anybody has a couple of questions. When, oh sorry, when yeah. you, you said that you've had five people um, out of the crowd, is that random? No, and the Brain Injury New South Wales uh, don't specify that the, the, the happy, you know, whether if, if the diagnosis is a brain tumor, they will accept that as an applicant. So brain injury is, is brain injury. So be it stroke or traumatic brain injury or brain tumor. So they're not specifically. So I don't work specifically with clients with brain tumor, but we do see a lot here at the clinic. So again, if you go onto their website and, and, and give them a call, they'll be able to talk you through the process. Yep. Yes. Yes. My understanding, oh, sorry. My understanding of enhanced primary care is that um, individuals with a chronic medical condition yep. can have their GP refer them for like a, a range of um, non-standard medical uh, assistance like physiotherapy, podiatry. Yeah, like allied health and you get five <laughs> sessions a year of which you, you unfortunately don't get five physio, five speech pathology, you could, you could use all five for physiotherapy, that would be the choice of the GP and the, the client depending on, on what services they needed. Yeah, and they, the rebates are about $53 per session, so again, it wouldn't cover the full cost, but it's a, it's a start. Some of yeah. Schools, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and it's it's difficult. I know with the clients that we treat, so we we deal with lots of complex clients, and so all of our treatment sessions are an hour to an hour and a half long. So unfortunately, it doesn't cover the cost of our sessions just because of the nature of the clients that we do see in the clinic being a neurological service. But um, yeah, right. 
No. Yeah. Any other questions? Yep. Um, how many people see it day? In a week, we will see in the clinic about 130 clients in a week. So a year ago, that would have been about 60 or 70. We've just grown so much. And then we do have a mobile service and we see pretty much the same amount of clients on our mobile service as well. So we cover all up to Palm Beach, down to Cronulla, and then out towards Westmead. So we're a really big service now. Um, so we, our clinic in St. Leonard's is a basic a, a purpose-built gym. We're a huge gym space and we're all neurological physios. We've got an OT there as well and a neuromuscular orthotist. So yeah, we're, we're a big practice now. Yep. Any other questions? Herbert Street. If you Google us, there's a little map on it. So we're um, archhealth.com.au, and we'll have a little map. We're just behind the Royal North Shore Hospital. Yeah. Yep. Thank you. <laughs>